Hi, and welcome to Mid-American Gardener. I'm Jen Nelson, I'm sitting in for Sandy tonight, and we've got a great panel of experts here to answer your questions. I don't know about you, but we are all chomping at the bit to get out in the garden. And if the weather would ever just cooperate and decide if it's spring or not, we'd all be out there. Uh, so before uh, I get into uh, taking calls, let's um, introduce the panel. So tonight we have uh, John Bowdensteiner. Uh, I am John Bodensteiner. <clears throat> I'm a, a Vermilion County uh, Master Gardener, and my expertise is mm, hostas, pr other perennials, shrubs, trees, and, and tomatoes. But tonight I brought one of my favorite early, early, early perennials, and that is called Lenten. The common name is Lenten Rose or Hellebore. And this, this variety is just, I just found this one, and it's a deep, deep, uh, dark red or purple with a yellow center and just gorgeous and it is called red lady and uh, these things will be up that they call their called the common name is lenten rose because usually they bloom around easter mm -hmm. or a little bit before easter the, mine at home i have been blooming for uh, basically a month already and uh, even though it's snowed they'll droop they'll they'll all kind of go limp but as soon as it warms up but they're back up and smiling at you and like you said we're all chomping at the bit mm -hmm. for uh, spring and this is just something to uh, along with the winter aconites and a few other things mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, I think winter aconites might be the only one that's earlier than this but it is really a nice uh, perennial and nice thing is it's perennial you don't have to replant it and uh, I've got one that uh, I was noticing that I've had for about Oh, five years and this right now there's about 200 babies around it oh, so I'm going to be transplanting those and around the yard and I don't know if I'll get them all but really a nice addition I say mine's planted along with winter aconite and when I uh, saw that they were blooming uh, about a month ago I thought there's hope there's still and there's <laughs> other colors there's um, a white there's kind of a greenish flower mm -hmm. and a, a pink so if you don't this one here doesn't show up from far distance but some of the others really do yeah oh, they, they, they come really doubles, they come yeah Dickety edges are beautiful yeah, yeah. A new double is, which is called the uh, honeymoon series oh, or the wedding lovely. series mm -hmm. Uh, those are, are very, very nice too. They're a little yeah, bit more are. expensive. If you have a little bit of a plant hoarder tendency or a plant collector, <laughs> you may not uh, be able to stop at just yes. one. <laughs> uh, but hey, let's just remind folks, this is a good time to call in. Um, our number's 217-333-3495. And uh, Marty, what did you have for us? Hi, my name is Marty Alanya. I'm a landscaper. And I have a question here about replacing sweet autumn clematis. Poor Karen, she planted some. Now she's <laughs> sorry, like everybody is who plants sweet autumn clematis. Sure, it's pretty, <laughs> but you know, it'll eat your children. It's <laughs> awful. So um, it, is, it is very attractive when it's in bloom, but holy smoky links, it's ridiculous. So apparently she has a fence. Um, I suggested if she can get it killed, okay? If you can get it killed, Karen, um, which you'll probably have to resort to using poison to do. But, um, you know, keep at her, girl. Once you get that down so it doesn't come up anymore, you might try the large flowered clematis, um, Jack Manny, Niobe, the President, there's uh, Nellie Moser, there are all these large flowered clematis that I'm sure you're familiar with. And if you plant different colors and different varieties, you can have bloom on that fence all season, really nicely, really. I don't know what kind of fence you have, and I don't know what kind of exposure you have, but because sweet autumn clematis will grow anywhere. So <clears throat> um, if it'll work, uh, honeysuckle, which the genus of honeysuckle is Lenicera. Look for Lenicera florida. It's a local variety. It's a native variety, and they have large flowers, uh, mm -hmm. deep rose and golden yellow, and they're fragrant. They're just delightful. I have it outside my back door. Not too tall. Doesn't you know, strangle small dogs on the way by like <laughs> some of the other varieties do. It's very nice, really pretty, fast growing. Um, if you want, if you have it, enough sun, you could do some climbing roses. You could do annual vines. You could do canary bird vine. You could do Mina Lobata. You could do Dutchman's Pipe. You could do morning glories. Um, whatever appeals to you, I'd look for the color you wanted in the season. There are some other things that are vines, but if it's too much sun, some things are only spring bloomers, like sweet peas gets too hot for. But 
Um, there are a variety of things you can use oh. once you get the clematis dead. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Marty. I think sweet autumn clematis is one of those plants that a lot of people regret planting. Seemed like a good idea yeah. at the time. And it looks so great on mm -hmm. like an old, old barn mm -hmm. where the cows just rub up against it and they trample it down. But if you want to put it someplace where you want to cultivate it, it'll just world domination is its goal. It's it's lovely, but dang, and it yep. comes up everywhere. Yep. So it, yeah, it comes up from seeds, so it that's part of the does. big problem <laughs> with it. But thank you for the tips. Right. Okay, Mike, what did you have? Okay. My name is Michael Brunk. I'm the Urbana City Arborist. I'm a certified arborist, a licensed landscape architect. I dabble a little bit in uh, landscape maintenance with the city, and I uh, am uh, involved with the Landscape Recycling Center. And I have a letter today that I'll read from Cynthia who has been planting white pines and has some issues. So last spring in April she planted 25 white pines about 18 to 25 inches in size. She lives next to Sand Ridge State Forest and it's very sandy soil. So uh, she added some dirt when she planted. That's probably a pretty good idea. Dirt, compost. Watered five days for eight to ten hours constant with a sprinkler hose upside down <clears throat> where the water goes straight into the ground. When it got hot and dry, she watered for seven days a week. Um, they're out in the open. It's sand. It gets really hot. Uh, they look really good going into winter. So I'd say your soil is very well drained uh, because generally that'd be too much water. Um, but I, I see some dieback this winter. Um, so is there any hope? Should she do something differently? Should she try some arborvitaes uh, to continue a privacy fence instead? Uh, she has plenty of space for either. So first of all, I think your watering deep is good because you want to train the roots to go deep, but you're watering too often. So you need to let the, the upper soil dry out a little bit between your, your watering. So maybe every three to five days, uh, maybe every three when it's really super hot, uh, normally every five, but water deep because you want to train those roots to go deep. And I think what's happening in the winter is when there isn't any moisture, when the ground's too hard uh, to allow moisture down into the roots, those roots are shallow. So they're not reaching down where it's not frozen, where the moisture is. So I think that's what's happening. Secondly, I would suggest mixing your uh, plantings up. I would suggest concolor fir, uh, Norway spruce, uh, limber pine. So you get a spruce, a pine, and a fir. Uh, maybe even mix in a, a few red cedars, uh, although those are short-lived and they do have fungal problems. But my point is mix it up. So if you have a problem with any one tree, you're not going to lose the whole batch. And thirdly, I brought, just for you, an idea for you because it's sandy soil that, that we've used. And, and they, they use this stuff uh, for lots of things. It's a water-absorbing polymer. So you can see they're just, they're just crystals. Um, they grow. So a, little, uh, a level teaspoon that's just that little amount, when hydrated, will grow into this amount. And uh, what you want to do with these water polymers, and you can, you can look them up, they come in a lot of names, soil moist, terrazorb, aquazorb. Mm -hmm. If you Google uh, hydrogel or water absorbing polymers, you'll find them. And you mix these in a bucket according to the instructions. Uh, Prehydrate them so you get this jelly stuff and then mix it into the tree hole as you're planting the tree with the soil. Not a lot. Uh, they suggest just a teaspoon like I showed you for a gallon of soil uh, and they suggest I think uh, one pound of this material for 100 square feet but follow the directions because it will grow. Now I could have added water to this and had it overflowing the bowl so, so know that it, uh, it can grow quite a bit but hydrogel might be your, uh, your solution. Thanks, Mike. That is a great tip. I've been using those gels in uh, pots for years. I never mm -hmm. thought about putting it in the planting hole. And I can also speak from experience that a little is good, but more is not better. <laughs> <laughs> I have thought, you know, I'll put a little bit more in and it'll be oozing out of the pots. So oh, like do yes, do it'll follow blow directions. blow them out of the pots, really. Oh, and excellent segue, by the way. That was good. <laughs> you can actually put food coloring in this, and I've seen people put a bulb Shut on top up. of it. Oh, yes, I've <laughs> seen they that They put a too. bulb on top of it in a glass bowl, and it'll just, you know. 
looks like a brain. another great tip. <laughs> okay. Uh, before we go, before we go into um, our callers, I want to remind everyone that we now have a Mid American Gardener podcast, and so if you haven't tuned into that yet, um, it's available via iTunes and Stitcher and NPR One. Um, I just added it to my Stitcher app at home. Uh, currently, the the latest. Uh, Episode is uh, number six, and Chuck Boyd is the guest. So tune in if you just want to get a little more Mid American Gardener in between shows. Um, tune in and hear some more questions answered. Uh, but right now we're going to go to the phones and please give us a call 217 333 3495. Our first caller is Rebecca, and she has a question on yuccas and hydrangeas. Go ahead, Rebecca. Hey, hi. hi. I love your show. I wanted to tell you that um, I had hydrangeas that I two hydrangeas I planted that were supposed to be those ever blooming kinds, mm -hmm. and um, they have never bloomed. They've never grown, and I was wondering what to do with them. And then I have a second question, please. Uh, I have yuccas, and they have spread out so much, and I'm wanting to know how to get rid of them. Can you help me, please? Thank you. I'll listen for the answer. Okay. Bye -bye. No, thank you. Okay, so how to grow hydrangeas and how to kill yuccas. How to make them flower. Yes. Uh, so. Hydrangeas are easy to, to grow. It's getting them to flower, mm -hmm. depending on the type of hydrangea. Um, she said it was ever blooming. Oh, so. it's ever blooming. So Probably one of the endless summers, and yeah, I've had a hard time getting and, them and, to bloom as well. They just, you know, if they're not getting just the right situation, even though they say they're going to bloom, 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 some of them just don't, and I've, I've, I've changed all mine to different, uh, you know, Annabelle's or, mm -hmm. or the... Paniculata. Yeah, the other hydrangeas. Blushing Bride I've had really good luck with. It was excellent, but I replaced some Endless Summers with Blushing yeah. Bride, and also the, uh, the Endless Summer Lace Cap varieties I've had good luck with. Blooming, not, it's a different look from a mop head, but they're pretty, and they did bloom. And then well. the uh, oak, oak leaf hydrangeas. Oh, too, the Kirks are, are very, very those reliable are, are too. Are very nice. Oh yeah. You know, they're different. They look completely different. Yeah, they have a cone-shaped flower instead of a round one. And as far as the yucca, um, <laughs> sometimes you know it's kind of like rhubarb. If you get rhubarb oh, or, or horseradish, some of these things planted. But the only thing you can do is cover the whole area with uh, hard uh, the, the the ground cover. Or yeah. or metal or or a, a, a <laughs> nuclear a, bomb a, or concrete, a, a yeah, big radioactive sheet of plywood, fallout. You got any of that? Uh, an old carpet that's going to not allow it, <laughs> uh, so that it doesn't get any light for about a year, yeah. and uh, and even then, after that, sometimes all of a sudden, and and digging it up, uh, you just make it mad and it multiplies. <laughs> I did, I did dig some up in an area about the size of this table right here, oh, wow. and we dug, and we dug, and dug, and dug, and then it did keep trying, but I was very diligent about unearthing it very deeply with a tile spade, I mean way deep, and dug every bit of root I could get out, and so far for the last, well, I haven't seen any this spring yet, I'm not saying there isn't any, but it is really, it's, if you're going to dig it up, dig deep. One of the other follow things you the roots, can do. Don't dig them, break them off. Keep yeah. following them and dig them out. And you can, if you do cut them off, take some concentrated Roundup mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. glyphosate and actually paint a fresh cut. And that sometimes will absorb it down into the root and kill it. I do that with Tordon as well. Yeah. It's perfect. So yeah, you works guys really well. If you could take the pieces of the rhizomes and pot them, <laughs> you could have a garage sale. <laughs> and oh, and give it to 50 plants. Oh. Yeah. That's just give it to pure all the evil. Neighbors you don't is what that is. <laughs> the yuccas look nice. You can use them in confined I, yeah. Give them to people you don't like. Yeah, I, I've They're got great. Some in Put my a little yard bow on the pot. Why, yes. Oh, you're horrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's let's moving on. Uh, Peter from Charleston has a question on new trees and when to plant them. Hi, Peter. Uh, yes. Hello. Th thanks for taking the call. Sure. What's your um, question? We're both members of you guys and the Arbor Foundation, and my little saplings have arrived. Oh. And we have um, the cypress, the forsythia, a couple of maples, and a couple of other trees. And with the weekend coming, is it okay to get them in the ground now, or should I wait with the snow coming? First question. Okay. Now. Yeah, plant them now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get them in now. Yep, get yeah, them in want, now. You don't want their roots to dry out, so I would, I'd get them in the oh. ground. 
okay? Um, yeah. Even tonight, as chilly as it is, it's okay. Yeah, it shouldn't it shouldn't Because they're, they're dormant, correct? Yeah, you, you could yeah. wait till tomorrow. Just keep yeah. the roots wrapped. You know, they probably came wrapped in a moistened mm -hmm. yes, paper towel. exactly. Mm -hmm. um, like plastic, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as long as the roots are moist, you're fine. You know, within the next week or so, get them in the ground. You don't have to rush mm -hmm. out and do it in the evening. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would um, uh, warn you, though, make sure you're planting them with the proper mature size in mind. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Proper spacing. So forsythias can spread out quite mm -hmm. a ways. I've got one uh, yeah. in my yard that's probably 20 feet wide. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. It just grows and grows and grows. Now it's quite old. Uh, and you can trim them back. You can, yeah, keep them trimmed. Yeah. Um, the, the bald <laughs> cypresses, you know, year. they're probably, they could be 30 feet wide yeah. or mm -hmm. so. Uh, okay. But just look at and their mature size and, and plant them accordingly, mm -hmm. space-wise. Uh, yes, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm sorry, and the mature side would be toward sun? Mature size. Mature, mature size. size. How big they get. How wide they get. Yeah. How tall okay. and wide. Yeah, don't plant them close to the house, in other words. Yeah. Or, you know, keep them away from you, your utility, utility lines. lines. Yeah. Uh, so look yep. the trees up and understand their mature size, how, how big they're going to be at maturity, and then know what kind of space you need away from your house, utilities, yeah. fences, right. things like that. And that can be tough when you get such a, a small tree to start with, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's a great, great point. That'll save you a lot of headache in the long run. I was thinking the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. So continuing on with our callers, we have um, Steve from Bloomington has a question on tree roots. Yeah, thank you for taking my call. Sure. Uh, I really enjoy your show. Um, I got a different kind of question for you. I recently moved into this house, and to my horror, I have found that this, what I believe is an autumn blaze maple, has had this two-foot-high brick edging around it for the last 15 years, I'm guessing. Oh. And I've recently, recently took, you know, uncaged it, if you will, mm -hmm. And, to, and what I have left is a two-foot-high hockey puck <laughs> full of roots. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, is there any hope? I mean, should I take the tree down? Or should I put dirt around it? Or I was wondering what you all think. Thank you. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, I guess the first thing to figure out is that I'm assuming the roots are under that as well. You, you're not just having a tree with its roots sitting on top of the soil. You'd be surprised. It's they're two <laughs> feet high above the soil. Weird I'm not. sure there's some down below it, but it's 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 amazing. I'm going to send you all a picture. <laughs> okay. How big is the tree? How tall is the tree? About 40 foot tall. So I'm guessing maybe 15 years old. And the caliper wow. on the trunk? Uh, probably about four inch. Four? Did you say? Four, yeah. Four inch. Well, yeah. I, I think you've got you've got some possibility there. Now, mm -hmm. what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to certainly not dig that away. I would try to um, leave the mound. Uh, you really, I'm assuming your your root crown has been buried. Now, you could uh, hire an arborist that has an air spade and see if you couldn't air spade some of that soil away and actually see what you have. And a, and a certified arborist may be able to look at that and trim some of those roots mm -hmm. away little by little. You won't be able to do it all at once. Um, the other thought I was going to suggest was to be creative and to mulch and, and kind of have a mound that you would take further out than that two foot area so it's mm -hmm. more subtle. But mm -hmm. I think you need to have a good certified arborist take a look at that tree um, and uh, quite a few of them have air spades. They could air spade the soil away, see what you have uh, there, and see if it couldn't be rectified and and brought back to where it should be. Because it sounds to me like your your trunk was covered with soil, and and it's it's much like a tree that's been planted too deep. That's mm -hmm. not a good future. No. Thanks, Mike. That's definitely a job for an arborist. Probably not a do-it-yourself project. Right. That's something that needs to be looked at. I think. Yeah. And I agree. Studied. Well, let's see if we can uh, get a few more viewer uh, questions in from our email. So, John, did you have another? Oh, question yeah, for I us? do have. I do have a email from Marion. Uh, she has two really large pots of tulip uh, bulbs that she planted um, last fall, and they're starting. They're in the garage. I take it's an unheated garage, so it's probably warming up a little bit, and um, they're starting to come up. Uh, and she's wondering if she can put them outside now 
or, and leave them overnight or should she bring them in and, uh, and uh, take them back uh, at the end of each day. <clears throat> Being we're going to have a really cold couple nights, I would say yes, if it's going to be really cold, like um, below 20, you know, or, or 22 in that area, to bring them in at least harden them off just a little bit uh, maybe for one or two three days do that and then after that I would leave them out and then what you need to do as soon as um, you can work the ground in your in your yard get them into the ground as soon as possible so that uh, they don't lose a lot of the potential for blooming again next year um, but uh, yeah I would definitely you can definitely bring them out during the day uh, as long as it's you know close to freezing and it doesn't have to be 30, 40 degrees, you know, 25, 26. You could take those out and then bring them in and they'll do just fine. Uh, and all you have to do is bring them in for about three days. And after that, I'd leave them out. And, uh, but then I'd get them into the ground as, uh, as soon as possible. Thanks, John. I had mm -hmm. a situation where I just had them in a bag in the garage over mm -hmm. the winter, and I planted them this time of year, and they did, they did fine. Yeah, yeah. They're built to survive. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Amazingly hardy. Okay. Let's say, uh, Marty, do you have a question? We do. We actually had a question that kind of got lost in the shuffle, and it was sent in last May, but here we are in April. <laughs> <laughs> How providential. Okay, um, dividing and transplanting. This this viewer has uh, hydrangea, barberry, and a small knockout rose, and they were thinking about transplanting, and or dividing. Um, I suppose. The hydrangea might be able to be divided, but um, wondering if this was the time of year to do it. And it is, if it's not too muddy. Mm -hmm. I mean, wait until the weather is is drier. Actually, it's mm -hmm. it's been kind of wet. Um, when you when you dig in mud, you compact the soil, and you when you dig it up, you're going to have trouble with it's it's much heavier when it's wet. And it's going to be a pain to make the hole because it's muddy. The roots don't settle in as well. Just try to try to pick, you know, when it's been dry for a few days or a week. But um, this time of year, here in early mid-April to on for the, you know, through June or the rest of the growing season, it's fine to transplant. Um, I would recommend you try to do it before they start to leaf out. Mm -hmm. um, that would be better for them because they're still dormant. But try try to do it when the when the soil isn't sloppy. It's just it's easier on everybody, including mm -hmm. the plants. Great, thanks, Marty. Sure. Now, Mike, did you have a question? To I do. Okay, this is about a yellow tulip poplar from Jason. I have a yellow tulip poplar that is about eight years old, has never bloomed. It's only about half the age that it needs to be to be blooming. So <laughs> I'll, I'll answer that right away. That. They bloom at about 15 years or older, so you got a little time to wait. But it also gets large burnt looking spots on the leaves, and some leaves turn crispy almost all over. Any ideas what I should do? The tree is stressed, so uh, it could be too dry, it could be too wet. Is the ground drained very well? Is it by a downspout? Um, is the area overly wet then, or are you giving it too much love where you're out there watering it all the time because it looks bad? That could be too much water. Or are you not doing anything in the heat of the summer with a young tree uh, and it may need supplemental watering, it could be too dry. Uh, it could just be a bad space and if it's young enough, you may think before it leaves out here uh, of, a, of a better area for it and transplant it. So those are some suggestions. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds like great suggestions to me. Um, yeah, you have to remember tulip poplars do get awfully large. They, they're very big <laughs> trees, yes. they're, they're a native tree. Um, and you know, in our community, they're, they're a tree that's uh, um, hit most often by lightning. Mm -hmm. I, out of about 80% of our lightning strikes are tulip poplars. Mm. Just because they're tall? I think they're some of the mm -hmm. tallest trees we have. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. Okay, we're going to take one last caller. Uh, Sue from Gibson City has a question on honeysuckle. Um, are you there? Yes, we're mm -hmm. here. Um, I love your show. You said um, that the honeysuckle that will eat small dogs, what is the name and where do I get it? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> uh, I think the common name is Hall's honeysuckle. It's, it's pretty invasive. The pink and yellow is uh, Lanicera florida and it's a smaller native version 
it's got large flowers, even though the plant itself is smaller statured. It's like eight to 10 feet, grows beautifully, very fragrant, really nice. You can do a couple of them and you get a better coverage and they're very tolerant of sun or partial shade. It's honeysuckle. But the, the ones I was recommending are the Lanicera Florida, the native variety that's pink and yellow. The ones I wouldn't recommend are <laughs> the <laughs> Chinese <laughs> all honeysuckle. It's insane. And it fits. It, it's insane. It propagates by seed. Is that what? Yeah. It, oh, it's it's But is it nuts. very, very fragrant? They're both fragrant. Okay, but that's what one, I'm right. one is just horrible. I mean, it's it, it climbs on everything. Okay, it's, well, thanks a lot. We have run out of time for this evening, but if you didn't manage to get your question in tonight, please call. go ahead and call our voicemail. You can call anytime, even in the middle of the night. Uh, the number is 217-300-8224, and we will try to use your questions on a future podcast or on a future show. So do call us, and thanks a lot for watching.